Sumesh Sir, Electrical Inspector, Government of Kerala, Vainad. And he's handling a session, Common Electrical Accidents at Home, uh, Factories and Learning from Mishaps. Uh, and uh, he's actually an uh, electrical engineer from uh, Kannur Engineering College. Passed out in the year 1994, and he was working in the Department of Electrical Inspectorate uh, after a small duration of uh, professional life in KSCB. Uh, presently, uh, Sir is uh, posted as Electrical Inspector in Wynard, and um, he is an ardent professional who is passionate on creating awareness on safety and uh, safety engineering. Uh, Sumesh Sir has been actively involved in uh, conducting talks, electrical engineering, and general safety across the state uh, through various uh, uh, societies uh, to engineering students, engineers, and Kudumbasuri units, etc. He prefers uh, physical talk, but uh, obviously, you know, because of this pandemic situation and all, uh, we are uh, in online mode. I hope uh, uh, Sir can deliver a best uh, uh, class and uh, with uh, uh, full uh, heartedly, I welcome you for this uh, uh, webinar, sir. And uh, I welcome all the participants from various uh, organizations and industries and academic uh, institutes for this uh, wonderful session. Hope you can enjoy this uh, session of common electrical accidents. And it is very relevant to there are so many accidents are happening. Electrical accidents are happening every year around 200 to 300 casualties are happening. And uh, it has been reported in Kerala's um, electrical inspectorate. Uh, so, so we can by this the knowledge what we are getting from this webinar, we can also take an initiative. We can make aware the other people to reduce electrical casualties, electrical accidents uh, in uh, home appliances, home and also in uh, factories. And uh, once again, I welcome uh, respected uh, chief guest of today and speaker of today's Mr. Sumesh uh, for the uh, wonderful session. Welcome, me, sir, and over to you. Thank you. May I start? Yes, sir. Of course, of course. Please. Thank you. Good afternoon to all. Uh, today, I, I would like to, first of all, I would like to thank the National Safety Council for giving me an opportunity to uh, give a pre webinar presentation today. Okay, I am requested to uh, conduct a webinar on electrical accidents. So what is the right, uh, what is my right to do that? That uh, I will explain first. I'm working as electrical inspector in the Department of Electrical Inspectorate, Kerala. At present, I'm working in Wayanad. Uh, many, of, many of the people does not know who is electrical inspector, what is his powers, and uh, uh, everybody thinks that it is a part of KSCB. But uh, electrical inspector is a, uh, uh, is, a, is a post appointed, uh, defined by the Electricity Act 2003, and Chief Electrical Inspector is the head of the head of our department at Trivandrum, and we have uh, uh, offices in all district with Electrical Inspector as the head of the office. Now, what are our duties and functions? The first duty is inquiry into the electrical accident, then inspection of uh, ins inspections for ensuring safety and standards. Actually, the name is electrical inspector, but our main duty is inquiry into electrical accident. Means all the other all inspections are just to ensure safety and standards of the installation. Then, uh, issue of various license and permits. It is also the duty of electrical inspector department. It is uh, done by a separate wing called the Kerala State Electricity Licensing Board rules, uh, like Kerala State Electricity Licensing Board. So. Today, I'm, I would like to discuss these points. Why awareness is so, so important? And what is an electrical accident and few case studies? So why awareness is so important? This is the accident statics in Kerala from 2009 to 2022. 2022. We can see around 200 to 250 people are, uh, are, uh, are dying due to electric shock in every year. Total accident, including fatal, non-fatal to animal, uh, comes around 500, uh, 450 to 500. 
we are trying to reduce this number but unfortunately it is going going like that that's 250 number 200 number is always happening in each year 200 number of human casualties are happening in every year in this year 2021 22 already 165 fatal human accidents were occurred in kerala this is the statistics now just we see what are the causes the first two causes accident relating to kscb and snapping of conductor we are not discussing in this session we are mainly concentrated in uh, domestic and uh, industrial accidents so the third one due to the usage of iron rod and iron ladder near electric line it is a, it is one of the ma major reason of electric line accidents in kerala in 2015 16 it is 30 30 people died due to such activity and uh, 2018 19 41 accident occurred due to the iron rod and uh, uh, ladder uh, activity then domestic premises the number is around 160 1 uh, 125 to 160 numbers are happening accident in industry it is very less compared to other state in kerala accident in industrial premises is very less several reasons are there the first one is the entrepreneurs are well aware of the problems that may arise if uh, a worker or uh, someone got electric shock or accident in from his premises so he is very cautious about uh, uh, such things then the next important factor is the electrical conductor the quality of electrical conductors in kerala is much high compared with other state so the quality of the work is good that also a reason for uh, less number of accidents in electrical in, the, in industrial premises another reason is the role of electrical inspector when a generator is installed in a premises uh, an approval or sanction from the electrical inspector is required in almost all industries generators will be there so the electrical inspector has some role in inspecting such a generating unit always when electrical inspector visit the installation he will uh, comment on the defects and lapses in the premises automatically uh, while uh, while getting the approval or sanction for the generator such defects will also get rectified so uh, because of these reasons the electrical accidents in industries are much less compared to other states but uh, electrical accidents in domestic premises it is Uh, increasing alarmingly so electrical electrical accidents is there any difference between electrical accident and other accidents you know there are several accidents uh, uh, in our so in our society vehicle accident it is the major one of the major accident that is happening happening then plane crash is there boat accident is there then fire of course fire is a very major one of the major accident then slipping slip and fall from a ladder or from higher uh, location then uh, such a, such many accidents uh, many we can we can find many type of accidents around us electrical accidents is one of such accident but is there any difference between other accident and electrical accident that is the first thing that we have to see we we human being feel our surroundings using our five senses that is using eye nose uh, taste and such as five five senses we are sensing our surroundings using this uh, uh, senses electricity can we see it no we cannot hear it we cannot smell it we cannot taste it but what happens if we touch it if we touch it it will be fatal so as it is invisible consider the case of a vehicle accident the driver gets few seconds to apply the brake or to turn his the steering but in the case of electrical accident there is no such a chance so awareness and uh, safety precaution has very important role in preventing electrical accidents so what is safety precaution already we told that precaution is uh, very important in preventing electrical accident then what is safety precaution this type of this type of precautions are uh, followed by many of us but this is not correct then the second thing this is a photograph from a work site uh, one person is working on a ladder he used a cutting pair to support one leg of the ladder this type of precaution or uh, awareness this type of activity will definitely invite accident so awareness should be scientific that is the 
intention of this type of uh, interactive sessions or awareness classes. So what is precaution? Precaution should be like this. The left side, it is the unsafe portion and the right side is the safe portion. So you know, whether it is applicable to home, here the you. person has wired, pardon? Pardon? May I continue? Yes. Yes, sir. Yes. Next. Camera open. Camera and YouTube. Other music. May I continue? Hello? Yes, please. May I continue? Yes, sir. You can continue. Yes, you can yes, continue. Yes, sir. Please continue. Okay, okay. Uh, I think some. Okay, okay. I think, uh, Minu, you can mute the rest of the participants. Yes, sir. Uh, here, the person has wear a safety helmet, then he has worn some safety uh, dresses, then shoe, everything he has uh, used. That is that what we call as PP, personal protective equipment. But whether it is applicable, this is applicable in industrial premises, but whether it is applicable in domestic premises? Of course, but it is, it, it is not in that way. Of course, we can use a chapel in the uh, kitchen. Majority of the accidents in domestic premises are met to the housewives. So they can wear a very good uh, chapel while working in the uh, kitchen. Then while handling the domestic uh, equipments, uh, it should be ensured that our hands are dry. Then uh, such uh, precautions can be taken in our domestic premises also. Then electrical hazards. Electrical hazards are classified, mainly classified into electric shock, fire, and explosion. Out of this electric shock and fire, we are familiar with uh, these two incidents, these instant uh, incidents, but explosion is not common to us. That we will see. All these, all these activities cause severe injury, injury or death. So what is electric shock? Electric shock is a dangerous pathological effect resulting from passing of an electric current through a human body or an animal. It occurs when our finger, hand, or any body part come in contact with the LI part. Now, what about electric fire? Electric fire, we know electricity does not burn, but the material, material around the electrical equipment may burn. How it happens is, when, whenever a current flows, some heat is generated. That heat is passed to the nearby object, and uh, when the temperature goes beyond a particular limit, automatically fire, fire is ignited. So what are the main reasons of fire is overload, short circuit, and loss conduct, loose conduct. This is the third case. We are not much not aware about this explosion. This is the photograph of a Tesla EV happened in, uh, blasted in USA. So this type of accident we had to expect in the future because EVs are now penetrating in our uh, vehicle industry. But we can, uh, for, uh, to prevent this uh, explosion, there are several safety measures are taken by the um, car manufacturers. Manufacturers, But uh, as it is in the initial stage, some problem may, or problem may create. But this is, a, this, is a, okay, this is a chance. There is a chance of explosion in EV battery. Then now, factors determining effect of shock. These are the main factors which affect the uh, severity of the shock. First one is the magnitude of voltage. Second is the magnitude of current, then duration, path of current, and body condition. Now we will see each, uh, each of these uh, parameters. Tol tolerable voltage, IS-732, that is the highest code for uh, medium voltage insulation says that up to 50 volt, AC 50 volt is not dangerous. It can be, it is tolerable for a human being. So if the voltage, we can limit the voltage below 50 volt, it is not dangerous. This is the case of AC. In the case of DC, it can go up to 120 volt. Now, tolerable current. The IA says that uh, current of 1 milliampere to 4 milliampere when close to a human body, he can feel it, but it does not make any uh, bad sense uh, to him. But 5 milliampere to 9 milliampere, 
it is called as let go current it 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 makes some sense in him it's some unpleasant sense in him now 9 to 25 milliampere it is painful that when a current of 9 to 25 milliampere flows it is painful and he lose some he lose control, his control on the muscle but not he does not lose the full control but uh, some uh, he he ha he he, ca he cannot uh, control his hands or uh, hands according to his wish according to his wish now 30 to 50 milliampere he lose full control over his uh, muscles and some problem respir respiratory problem will uh, initiate so up to 50 milliampere there is chance uh, chance to rescue, chance to chance, there is chance yeah. of uh, uh, rescue, but uh, above that 50, it is dangerous. So, somehow, if we could uh, limit the current below 30 milliampere, we can, uh, we can rescue, we can save the life of that person subject to electric shock. Now, what is the factor which limit, which limit the current through the body? Of course, the resistance of the body is the factor which lim which limits the current through the through any object. Human body also have uh, some resistance. The body, the outer outer body, that is skin, has the highest resistance. The normal highest uh, normal skin resistance is 100 kilo ohm to 600 kilo ohm when it is dry. But when the skin become wet, that resistance come down to around 1000 ohms. Normally, the resistance of the human body is considered as 1,500 to 300 ohms. So then the next factor is the path of current. Our body, our, the heart is the one of the vital uh, organ in our body and basically it's working. It's basically, it is based on an electric pulse. So when an external electric current, electron, ele external electric current passes through the body, the uh, inbuilt uh, pulse gets uh, some distortion so the working of the heart will uh, get uh, uh, some problem and it causes uh, the heart to stop and uh, which in turn uh, cause the death of the human being so when the if the current flows through the heart it will be it will be more dangerous so when the when the current flows from his hand to leg of course the current will flow through the heart when one hand to other hand, then also the current flows to the heart. But if the current flows from one leg to other, it does not flow through the heart. So that condition is not much dangerous. Then and all these things happen, all these things happen in industries and the domestic premises. Because while we are operating an equipment or while we are touching a, a wire or some something like that, these conditions will happen. But this case happens in outdoor when an electric line uh, breaks and falls on that person or when the clearance of the line is uh, much less this type of accident may also happen the reasons for electrical accident in domestic premises can be mainly classified into uh, this faulty equipment as i said earlier faulty equipment is one of the major uh, major reason of accident in domestic premises one of the major, one of the main equipment which cause accident in domestic premises is the iron iron box, because it is we almost all uh, people use this equipment, so the chance of uh, accident from iron box is very high. Then use of iron rod or ladder. Ladder. The next two months, that is uh, March, April, and May, we have mango and uh, uh, jackfruit are there. People use iron rod and ladder to pluck these things from the tree. And without uh, without knowing the danger involved with the electric line, they bring these ladders and the iron rod near to the line and uh, uh, got electric shock from this line. Earlier, we, are, we were using um, bamboo, but now it is not available. So we are using iron metal rod and the ladder for using uh, for these purposes that is it is one of the major reason only awareness can make uh, make awareness can bring down these accidents uh, bring down these accidents then temporary extension temporary extension is one of the major reason of accident in domestic and industrial premises uh, with the with the covid season almost uh, 
all members of the family have mobile phone but in normal home there is only two or three plugs but to charge the mobile phone they use some extension cord or some other they made some other make some other arrangement to charge these uh, mobile phones such a temporary extension always cause electrical accident then unauthorized electric fence in wayanad electric fence are used uh, to prevent the attack from wild wild to the agricultural agricultural crops but what uh, actually the electric fence is to be energized using an electric fence energizer but unfortunately our people are directly connecting the electric supply to the fence this unauthorized energization of electric fence is causing much electrical accident in wayanad and other districts then poor quality of wiring it is one of it is another major reason of electrical accidents in kerala as per rule only authorized person only licensed electrical contractor is supposed to do the electrical work but now in kerala many unauthorized electrical works are on progress finally it is uh, the test report is signed by some uh, electrical contractor and given to the kscb and supply is available but the quality of the wiring done by an unauthorized and unqualified person will be poor and such unauthorized and un, un, un non standard wiring will cause may cause uh, electrical accident then overloading of circuit that already uh, discussed in uh, point 3 when additional equipments are connected the every electrical wiring is designed to carry certain current but when when we buy new electrical gadgets or equipments it is connected to the existing uh, wiring it will cause overloading one such accident occurred Uh, just a year back in Vienna, that that person brought an electric electrical uh, auto rickshaw, and he used it to charge it from his home. Uh, in the first few weeks, the, nothing happened, but uh, after a month, this wiring uh, got fire because of this uh, charging. Actually, he, suppose if we are buying a if we are charging an electric vehicle. a new plug point from the incomer itself is to be given to charge the electric car because electric car takes around 16 to 25 ampere for charging for around 1 hour to 2 hour so if we are connecting the electric vehicle to the downstream of our uh, house wiring it may damage the uh, it may damage the existing wiring of the uh, domestic premises so uh, before we buy, buy an electric car uh please provide a, a plug point near to the incomer itself through a a type a type rcb because normal rcb may trip while charging the electric vehicle as it may contain some harmonics so as uh, the regulation recommend a type or higher type rcb to charge electric vehicles the main reason of all this uh, uh, main reason is the and uh, inadequate knowledge is the main reason for these type of activities fundamental fundamental rules of protection against electric shock there are mainly there are two uh, rules hazardous life part must not be accessible then second one is accessible conductive part must not be hazardously light so we will see these things hazardous life part must not be accessible it means take the case of a wire that wire is provided with insulation over the conductor by which we have made the hazardous part inaccessible then in the case of enclosure also we are providing enclosure to make the live part inaccessible in the case of overhead line we are making the hazardous parts inaccessible by keeping the lines on tall electric post then the fencing fencing is also to also to make the live parts inaccessible this is the this is one of the technique used to prevent accident then the sec but what we see in site is this is a photograph that we uh, took from a uh, fltc uh, set up in connection with the covid the unauthorized and unskilled uh, wireman connected the tube light in the covid ward like this 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 is much dangerous and see this photo this is the person have applied the 
uh, insulation tap very well, but a single strand is coming out of the insulation tap. It is it it, it will it may cause danger to the person operating that uh, equipment. So this is the one the reason the main reason is the his his uh, ignorance about uh, his work. If he apply that insulation tap in uh, in very well, this will not happen. He is not aware of his work. That is the main reason of this uh, uh, this situation. Then this is the motor terminal in a water authority insulation. Then this is the temporary insulation. Here it is uh, exposed to the rainwater. It is the tube light and the wires are fixed on uh, metal pole. If any if a, if any leakage occurs to that metal part, it may extend to all the throughout the insulation and anyone in coming in touch with that insulation may cause the accident. Now, first the first method we uh, discussed is the discussed is the make the live part inaccessible. Then suppose if a metal part uh, is uh, energized, then how it can be made dead? That the perp the it is done by earthing. Accessible conductive part must not be hazardously light. For that, the technique used is earthing. Earthing is the technique used to make a conductive part not becoming hazardously light. The door of the uh, every uh, every distribution body is to be earthed using this flexible connection. Now this is the case of a motor. If any leakage comes to the motor body, if the motor is earthed, that fault current will flow to the earth through the earth connection and it will operate the uh, protective device making the uh, making the uh, clearing the fault. This is the uh, technique uh, by uh, the earthing technique. Here the equipment is not earthed. That means if any leakage comes to that body, if a person come in, con come in contact with that uh, equipment will get shocked. But if it is earthed, before whenever that uh, leakage occurs, the fault current flows to the uh, earthing, earthing, earthing system, make the protective device to operate, making the system safe. But how we are doing the earthing? This is a photograph uh, from a temporary installation. Here DG is earthed. But see the see the method he adopted. He he used to see a small iron rod in between the interlocks. But uh, then this is a solar installation. Here consumer has invested a lot on earthing system. But we will we will see each of these photo. The first photo. This is the first photo. Here, the person has used a, a screw with the plastic washes. So, earthing, as far as the earthing is concerned, it should be tight, it should be perfect, it should uh, give a minimal resistance to the main earthing system. But by using this uh, plastic washer, that the condition cannot be achieved. Then, see the side view. Here, you can see a uh, very huge gap between the main structure and the earthing conductor. That means that earthing is not perfect. Then the third photo, this is the foot of the lightning arrester. That pipe is carrying the lightning arrester and that earth strip is used to connect the lightning arrester to the main earthing system. But he forgot to uh, forgot to weld or uh, uh, apply, uh, screw the earth uh, uh, Earth bar to the lightning arrester. When we asked, he said that the wire of the welding set and the driller is too short, so he could not bring those equipments uh, near to that point. And we, he didn't expect that somebody will see this. That is the reason he told when we inquired why he done like this. So here the consumer has invested a lot on earthing system, but he's not. He will not get a, its. Uh, uh, output when it is required. So all the consumers, all the persons should ensure that earthing is done in a perfect way. Some common repeated reasons of electrical accident in domestic and industrial premises. This is one of the major 
uh, accident uh, point that happens in elect in domestic and industrial premises. This is the main switch that we call main switch uh, provided at the incomer of the consumer premises. What happens is the common uh, common problem with this type of uh, uh, switch is the ebonite rod burns uh, the, because of the, the inflation of the ebonite rod uh, damages and supply is coming to the is uh, coming to the body of the switch. If someone touches to the someone touches this uh, uh, switch, he he will get an electric shock. Many accidents are reported because of this reason. The same the same the, this is another photo. What we can do to prevent such accidents? This type of switch as this if these type of switches are creating problem, we can very well replace it with the MCB, SFU or MCB. Only thing is if three phase supply is availed, that switch should be four pole. If it is single phase, two pole switch is to be used. Then that switch should have isolation duty. Also, it should provide overload and short circuit protection to the installation. So MCB or MCCB or SFU will be a better option instead of this type of old, uh, uh, all type of switches. By using these equipments, we can ensure, uh, ensure protection as well as uh, accident from uh, damage due to the damage to these switches. Another another incident, another reason of electrical accident is uh, this type of uh, this uh, uh, the wires are taken through the holes drilled on metallic object. If the wire come in contact with that uh, metallic object, the metallic object will have a sharp edge, and such a sharp edge will damage the insulation of the wire and the supply is coming to that uh, metallic path and cause accidents. Here you can see the two, uh, two uh, phases, R phase and Y phase, uh, R phase and middle phase. In the middle phase, the proper sleeve has been given, so no, there is there no problem. But in the R phase, as no sleeve is provided, the wire come in contact with the sharp edge of the metal object and the supply, uh, the insulation, got damaged and the supply come to that uh, metal board and the person come in contact with that uh, uh, metal object got shocked and uh, electrocuted. So what should do? We should ensure that uh, the PVC uh, PVC sleeves are provided while taking wires to the metal of metal uh, panel. Then another reason for electrical accident in domestic premises is service wire. In service wire, it is not to, not supposed to have any joints, but unfortunately, in almost all service wires in Kerala have some joints in it. Also, the service wire is uh, accompanied by a metallic support wire. If there is any joint in the service wire, that joint may come in contact with the support wire. Thus, supply may come to the come to our premises, which may cause accident. So, it is better not to use a metallic support wire or if metallic sub, uh, support wire is used, ensure that there is no joint, exposed joint in the service wire. Then damage to the wire. This is, uh, this, this, uh, you may, you may see this type of uh, damaged wires in, in our homes, especially with the wire of our uh, iron box. Each time we carry the iron box, the wire get uh, twisted and this twisting damages the wire. Whenever such damage occurs to the wire, please replace such wire immediately. It will prevent accident in future. Then, so far we had discussed uh, 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 protection, safety, safety from uh, certain incidents. Now, fault protection. When fault occurs, that fault is to be cleared. For that, some protection equipment is to be provided. What is fault protection? IS 4122 says preventing a current resulting from a fault from passing through the body of any person or any livestock. Then B and C. B says that limiting the magnitude of current resulting from a fault which can pass through a body to a non hazardous value. C states that limiting the duration of the current resulting from a fault which can pass through the body to a non-hazardous time period. That is, if the magnitude of the current and the time period is limited, it, uh, we can ensure protection. For that, we are using 
different techniques one is earthing or earthing already we have discussed the second thing is rcd residual current device residual current device is to limit the uh, leakage to certain ampere certain milliampere in domestic premises it is recommended to use rcds of 30 milliampere sensitivity and uh, tripping time of rccb used in domestic premises 30 milliampere rccb should be less than or equal to 200 millisecond now we will see how leakage happens this is an iron box every electrical equipment has two parts one a, a part which should carry electric current and the other part which should not carry electric electric current current should flow through the part which should uh, through the internal system then only it will work but it should not uh, appear on the outer body in the case of electric iron the current should pass through the coil of that uh, electric iron but it should not come to the body but uh, this uh, coil and the body are separated using an insulation but due to many reason that insulation may get damaged in such a case the supply may come uh, su supply may appear on the body of the instrument if some person touches that body that fault current pass through the hu the man the human being and he may get a shock if that current is limited below 30 milliampere it may not be fatal for that purpose we are using rccb rccb of 30 milliampere sensitivity and the tripping time less than 200 millisecond this is a regulated requirement as per regulation 42 of central electricity authority measures relating to safety and electric supply all insulations with the connector load greater than 2 kilowatt should provide an earth leakage protection device at the origin in kerala we have we uh, kerala government insisted rccb for all consumers for getting electric connection this is the is 732 requirement uh, about, about the rccb in tn system the operating time may, may be up to 0.4 millisecond in tt system it should be less than 0.2 mil 0.2 amp 2 second that is 200 millisecond uh, this is a figure that you are familiar with rccb but what we see in our site is this is the photograph taken from a installation where rccb is provided but it is not connected in circuit they provided the rccb just to get an electric connection this is the photograph from an old installation the wire may, the as yes, the wiring is old the may, may oh, the as yes, the wiring is old the wireman uh, uh, knows that the elcb will not uh, uh, elcb will not uh, provide in that circuit as the wiring is poor but for getting the connection for getting the connection to the newly ad added portion no extended extended portion he should provide a, a elcb so he provided elcb but uh, not connected in the circuit then this is another case this is the photograph taken from a hospital during covid season uh, as yes, during the covid season it is not possible in the initial stage uh, nobody is ready to go into the covid ward so the electrician simply bypassed the uh, rccb this is another photo this is also from a hospital premises then now we see a photo in which a fox is died and uh, you can see a uh, electric uh, earth wire in his mouth before that we see a regulatory requirement regulation 12 of the central electricity authority says the uh, safety regulation says that all electric supply lines and apparatus shall be of sufficient rating for power insulation and estimated fault current and of sufficient mechanical strength for the duty cycle which they may require to perform under the environmental condition of insulation and shall be constructed installed protected worked and maintained in such a manner as to ensure safety of human being and animal and property this is the regulatory requirement so in connection with the enquiry of this accident we see that this is the metering box provided at the installation here the main switch and the rccb are provided on on a hinged door on the other side on another hinged door meter and cutout fuses are 
provided. We notice that the wire connected to the uh, cathode fuse is damaged due to the due to pressing with the sharp edge of the metal board. Each time the door of the uh, meter board is opened, this wire gets pressed with the metal uh, metal frame and uh, the insulation is damaged. Thus, supply appeared on the body. The body is connected to the earth electrode through an earth wire. Supply appeared in the earth wire and the uh, fox come across that uh, earth wire got electrocuted. So what is the, what is what is the pro actual problem here is it is not supposed to fix the meter cutout fuse or main switch on hinged door. It should be inside the inside the box. No light part should appear on the uh, on the on a hinged door. That is the that is the major reason of the accident. IS four six four eight. What is the what is what the IS four six four eight says about? Uh, General electrical layout of residential building says energy meter shall be installed at, at such a place which is readily accessible to both the owner and the supplier. That the meter should be accessible to both the owner and the supplier. Then the height convenient to note the reading. How height should not be much higher, it should not be much lower. It should be at about 1.8 meter. Should be provided with a protective covering. Meter should be provided inside a protective cover. That is, the energy meter should either be provided with a protective covering, covering, enclosing it completely, except the glass window through which the reading are noted, or inside a completely enclosed panel provided with a hinged door or sliding door with the arrangement for locking it. Here it is stated that it should be in installed inside a completely inside enclosed panel with the hinged door. It is not supposed to install or provide the meter on the hinged door. The meter should be inside the box, but that box can have a hinged or sliding door to uh, see the to retake the reading and other things. So the problem in the above accident was the meter and the electrical equipment are installed on the hinged door. Because of that, each time the door is opened, the wire is pressed with the sharp edge of the panel and insulation is damaged, insulation damaged. This is, these are from clauses from NEC regarding the energy meter. It should be readily accessible, already we discussed. It should not be located at an elevated or depressed area. Then height of the meter shall be between 750 to 1800 mm. A minimum clearance of 50 mm should be maintained around the meter, that is inside the panel. Then regarding the fire safety, IS 1646 states, says, all switchboards shall be of metal clad, totally enclosed type or any insulated enclosed pattern. We should be fixed at a close proximity to the point of entry of supply. Then 5.12 says that timber shall not be used for construction of an electric switchboard. Metallic switchboard is preferred for constructing uh, meter, meter, meter board. These type of metal board are meter board are to be used here. The meter is to be fixed inside that box, not on the hinged door. Then this is another accident premises. The, accident, the person who touched this motor got electric shock. On an inquiry, what we see is this motor was not rigidly fixed. That was the uh, that was the issue of this accident. When we uh, see that. Uh, uh, see the terminal cover. When we open the terminal cover of the motor, we could see that the insulation of the wire damaged due to the rub due to the rubbing with the cover of that terminal ter cover uh, terminal cover. It happened because the motor was not rigidly fixed due to the continuous vibration. The uh, insulation of the wire damaged and uh, supply come to the body of the motor and the person who touched the accidentally touched the motor body got electrocuted. Now these are some bad practices that is uh, commonly seen now in our construction site. The, one of the main reason is the uh, labors from outside state. Our, our labors, our electricians will not do this, but uh, the labors from other state are doing this practice for handling electric supply to operate their equipment and uh, uh, 
uh, for using electricity. This practice should not be allowed. If somebody sees such situation, it should be communicated to the concerned and such a practice should be uh, stopped. Then this is another photo that we see in an installation. The MCB is provided to uh, operate during a fault, but uh, mechanically it is uh, here, it is mechanically stopped by using such rubber bands and such things. Then this is uh, uh, local technique to use electricity, but this type of practice should not be entertained. Now DB, workmanship is very important in ensuring electrical safety. The first thing, first thing and the second photo, uh, it reveals the workmanship uh, of, uh, of electrical work. Now, to prevent electrical accident, what we can do? Consider every material part as live. Before touching every metal part, we should uh, treat it as live. Then, before touching any metal part, ensure that it is dead. Then only, uh, before starting any work, it should it should be ensure, consider that it is live. Then ensure that it is dead. Then only uh, start uh, work on such uh, installation. Always use PPE. If we have PPE, PPE, it should be used. Then, if possible, prefer non-contact type meters and testers. You now nowadays we have a lot of non-contact type testers are there. If uh, if we are using it, whenever we approach a light part, it beeps and uh, it is cautioned. The light portion, we, uh, we, we get a caution about the light portion, then such accidents can be avoided. Then identify possible hazards. Before starting a work in an industry, identify the possible hazards. Only a qualified person can identify such, a, such a hazard. So we should entrust the work to a qualified person. Then think twice before do. In house premises, this, this will not be practical, but in industries, think before twice before do. For doing the, the identify the possible hazards and think twice before do can be done by a qualified person. All the above follow standard and safe practice for doing electrical work. Uh, regarding the electrical work, planning is very, very important. What we see is, uh, in almost all electrical installations, HD installations, uh, the scheme of the electrical electrical installation reaches our office only in the final stage. Before that, almost the consumer or the entrepreneur, everybody knows that electricity is required for operating that, in, uh, that installation, but how much it is required and how it can be, uh, what are the requirements for availing power, they are not aware. So in the later stage, the uh, location for installing electrical equipment, such as transformer, panel boards, there will not be sufficient space. Then panels are located under the staircase and transformers and uh, generators are, uh, are to be located in parking area, then it will create issue. So to avoid such, a, uh, such, a, uh, such difficulties in future, before starting the civil work, or at the time of starting the civil work itself, you, we should plan. We should plan. We should uh, aware about the power requirement of our installation. Should provide sufficient space for installing transformers, pa panels, and uh, other electrical equipments. The, also, we should expect future expansion. In uh, every installation, will will have to expand after a few years. Accordingly new panels or new transformers or such equipments are to be installed. So considering all these things, sufficient space is to be provided at the initial stage of the project for electrical work. Then licensed electrical contractor. Every electrical work is to be, as per regulation 29 of the uh, safety regulation, all electrical works are to be carried out by a licensed electrical contractor. It is a statutory requirement but unfortunately, in many in many instances, it is not like that. Only in the final stage of the final stage of electrification, or only for getting electric connection, the electrical contactor, a licensed contactor, is introduced into the picture, and uh, he uh, just do paperwork and uh, get electric connection. But this is uh, this is much this create much difficulty to the consumer or entrepreneur uh, while getting electric connection. So. 
it, it if it is uh, ensured that the work is awarded to a licensed electrical conductor it will reduce uh, has, uh, difficulties in future ensure safe, safety and standard then use good quality material while saying about the good quality material as i said earlier in kerala kerala government uh, made uh, in recommended uh, or kerala government made it mandatory to use RCCBs in all consumer premises for getting electric connection. Then, normal RCCB, normal single phase RCCB will cost around 200, 2000 rupees. But uh, when such a rule is enforced, poor quality RCCBs at uh, 600 rupees or 400 rupees are penetrated into our market and our consumers used to buy such uh, RCCBs. So, but uh, consumers are not aware why why the uh, why the why the government insisted or made it mandatory to use rccb it is to protect our life it is protect our society so uh, so using good quality material is very important only awareness can uh, awareness will help in uh, insisting the consumers uh, will make uh, awareness among the consumers about the use of good quality materials then periodical maintenance periodical maintenance is very very important in industries uh, there should be a maintenance wing that maintenance wing should uh, check each and every panels equipments uh, periodically to ensure the safety of the electrical installation if we follow these uh, practices we can reduce electrical accidents uh, in the electrical installation thank you Questions, if any, you can either post in the chat box. Uh, Steffi, sir, are you there? Hello. Any questions? Uh, can you please post on the chat box? Yeah. It was a good presentation. Yeah. It is audible. Uh, sir, my question is, ah, yes. sir, in the authorized electrical fence, what is the safe voltage? Whether a human being touch the fire, whether it can kill him or not. Your question is about the electric fence, is it not? Uh, yes, sir. Okay, okay. Uh, the voltage of that uh, electric fence energy output is around 10 kilo, 10 kilo volt, but the duration is very short. Only pulses are given by the electric fence energy, sir. When the person or animal touches the electric fence, he get a shock. But okay. uh, as it is uh, for a very short duration, it will not be fatal. Okay, okay. it will be stop. It will uh, uh, switch off. Electric current yes. is only pulsating. Okay. Yes, it is pulsating. It is pulsating. Okay, sir. Uh, another question is about uh, confined space in industry. Some equipments like uh, electrical uh, grinders, uh, drillers, uh, the, the, they have to be used in DC voltage for for safe working conditions. Uh, please uh, tell me about that. Whether they are effective or not uh, using in confined space. Yes. Yes, as per IES, uh, uh, already I have told voltage above 50 volt is dangerous in the case of DC, uh, in the case of AC, and uh, in the case of DC, 120 up to 120 volt it is uh, danger free. So if you are using DC, it will be it will be good, it will be safe. Oh. 
Just like AC. Hello. This not audible. Not audible. Not audible. Sir, uh, am I audible? Yes. Yes. Uh, sir, uh, in uh, uh, hello, am I audible, sir? Hello. Yes. Yes. Uh, sir, uh, myself Rauf Kamp from uh, um, Gale India Limited. Sir, I have a small doubt. It is regarding the battery room. Okay, the battery room where nickel cadmium batteries are necessary. You have all the electrical equipment must be intrinsically safe. Or uh, what about the junction box, which is placed in the uh, battery rooms? Is it uh, necessary to have uh, intrinsically safe? Uh, pardon. Sir, in industries, there will be battery rooms, right? Basically, nickel cadmium batteries and uh, all other batteries will be stored in uh, in some rooms. So, as per uh, as per standards, it is uh, uh, it must be intrinsically safe. But my question is that, uh, what about the junction boxes? Is it uh, uh, is it must be a uh, flame proof equipment or intrinsically safe equipment? Yes, okay, okay, okay. In the battery room, if it is lead acid battery, there is a chance of hydrogen gases in that uh, battery room. In okay. such a case, it is recommended not to use uh, incandescent lamp or uh, open terminal box in the electrical room. But okay. nickel cadmium, I am not, uh, I am not sure. I don't know. Sure. But uh, lead acid battery, it is not recommended to provide any open terminal inside the battery room. Because of this, hydrogen gas can be uh, evolved, right? Yes. It Yes, sir, but my yes, question yes, is that you know what about the junction box? Is it uh, in, is it recommended to have uh, you know uh, junction box inside the battery room? Uh, I I I don't know. I will I will contact you after uh, getting the details. Okay. Just uh, okay, right okay. now I don't know. Okay, okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Sir, uh, one more question. You mentioned about electrical vehicle explosion. Is uh, lead acid battery they will pro produce hydrogen and uh, is uh, this ion lithium ion batteries also the explosion is possible for uh, electrical yes. vehicle? Yes, yes. Uh, lithium ion battery. If some if some damage occurs, if any uh, such a, such cases are reported in uh, European countries where electrical vehicles are com now commonly used. But uh, they are the manufacturers are making many many uh, new technologies to prevent such accident. But it is it is happening. Uh, what we have to see is Tesla is providing the EV at 40 lakh to 50 lakh. But uh, we are getting the vehicle at uh, 20 uh, 14 to 20 lakh. Then the, yes. we don't know where the compromisation is made in reducing the cost. So we have to expect that. But uh, we cannot uh, rule out that chance. Thank you, sir. Some more questions in the chat box. Uh, why? Uh, I am reading one question in the chat box. Uh, am I audible? <laughs> so, my sir, am I audible? Yes, yes. Uh, why before giving to electrical supply to a house, an inspection from electrical inspectorate not conducted? This is a question from Mr. Manoj. This, uh, is, this is to be decided uh, by the uh, statute. Uh, actually, uh, from the uh, because uh, hello. Please uh, don't cross out. Please don't cross out. Please don't cross out. Please don't cross out. Please Please proceed. Okay. Inspection of electrical inspector is uh, determined by the statute. Nowadays, uh, from the point of ease of doing business, the regulation or regulations are uh, uh, trying to reduce the inspection of electrical inspector. So, uh, so I cannot uh, say anything why it is no, it is uh, why the inspection of electrical inspector is not uh, uh, done in all installations. The regulation insists the statutory inspection of electrical inspector in certain premises. There, definitely, we inspect in where we don't have any jurisdiction, we cannot. Uh, Conducting session. 
thank you sir and uh, another question is from arun b in a system what is the minimum voltage for which earthing is mandatory or obligate is there minimum voltage that that minimum voltage for which earthing is required to be done oh. Okay. Uh, there is specification in IS, but I don't remember the value now. Anyway, less than 50 volt, there is no earthing is required. That is uh, extra low voltage earthing. It is earthing is not required. But uh, LT and medium voltage system earthing is required. Uh, I think some voltage uh, voltage is specified in IS. I will contact that person if you give me the number. Sure, sure. Yeah. Any other questions? Uh, uh, sir, one more question from, sir, one more question. Yeah, uh, sir, go uh, ahead. I have uh, heard that uh, nowadays uh, for this RM units, uh, ring main unit units, uh, it is uh, required to have uh, SCADA uh, integrated with it. Uh, so is it a mandatory requirement, sir? I think it is not mandatory, but it is using everywhere. It is not mandatory, but it is using uh, in, in RMU, RMU system. So will we will we find the difficulty to get the inspectorate approval for it if we don't have a SCADA in it? I think inspector is not insisting the same. Huh? I don't think so. Huh? Yeah, now it is like that. Sir. Now I happen to uh, in, uh, hear one uh, case in Car Kochi itself. Oh, no, I don't. I don't know. I don't know. I know. I will check it and check it. Check and info. Okay. Scada is not ma as far as electrical inspector is concerned. He has to uh, look into the safety matters, such as other things uh, that the service provider or the consumer has to decide. I think so. Okay. So no, uh, no one from KSCB will uh, uh, restrict. I mean, they will insist to do uh, to have this Scada, right? No, no. No, if KSCB insists, that is the that is the beneficiary is the KSCB. If KSCB insists, it should be provided. But uh, okay. electrical inspector has no role to insist it. If the so can, KSCB can, insists, can, it should be provided. It should be provided. Can can KSCB insist the same? It is a supplier. It is the beneficiary. He can decide what are the requirement that he should have. But uh, that is be, his, should, his right. That is his right. But it should be uh, uniform across Kerala, right? Okay, that that is that, that okay, that okay. But that decision has to be taken from the KSCB side, not from inspector. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you, sir. Sir, you have mentioned about the MCCB and the SFU. What is SFU? SFU is switch fuse unit. That is. Uh, uh, MCCB, as you know, molded case circuit breaker, SFU is a switch fuse unit. Yep. That is the fuse is the protection, fuse is giving the protection in SFU. In MCCB, uh, other uh, MCCB is operating in other principles. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. I think if uh, no other questions, uh, I request uh, Google to deliver the formal vote of thanks. Google. Sir, there are other questions in the chat box. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Just hold on. Yeah, uh, one question is uh, as per electrical act, what is the frequency of medical examination for electricians? Mm, I don't know. We did this. Uh, I am also not sure. <laughs> no, no, I, uh, electrical. I don't know about that. Some places people are, have constructed building under KCB transmission line. Is it an approved way? How can we stop such constructions? Okay. Uh, earlier, in as per in the electricity rule, it is allowed to construct a building and un building under or near electric line. But with the introduction of elect, uh, safety regulation, Central Electricity Authority measures relating to safety and electrical regulation, regulation seven as per regulation 63, it is not permitted to construct a building under an existing electric line. 
But in regulation 116, the regulation 116 gives some powers to the electrical inspector to deviate the regulation 63. That means if he wish, he can, if he uh, thinks so, he can give a permission to uh, construct a building under the power line. The two conditions are the owner of the line should give consent to give a NOC for such construction. Then it then the second thing is it should the building should maintain the statutory clearance mentioned in the regulation. So in Kerala, it is a thickly populated uh, area. So we cannot ban the construction under electric line. So when the new regulation is uh, introduced, our chief electric inspector, our then chief electric inspector give direction to evoke the powers under the regulation 116 and to give permission for constructing constructing only residential buildings under the electric line. Uh, so now in Kerala, uh, electrical inspectors are permitting to construct electric uh, buildings under electric line by maintaining the statutory clearance and with the consent of the supplier, that is the owner of the line, for residential purposes only. But the, now the problem is, in Kerala now, uh, power grid lines are there, Power grid is a central government authority. They are not giving NOC for constructing uh, buildings under their line. But KCB, give, KCB is giving consent, so electric inspector is uh, permitting uh, such a construction. This is the present uh, situation. I think it is clear now. Any other questions? Deputy sir, are you still there? Yes, sir, I am here. Yes, sir, I am here. Okay, okay. So I, I uh, hand over the pattern to you, sir. Yes, yes, yes. It was a very nice session, and um, uh, what you can say, he has explained in the beginning about the pattern. Fatality, fatality and non fatality accidents are happening in Kerala. Especially Kerala is very vulnerable to electrical accidents because we have a rainy monsoon season, a lot of trees. Uh, there is a chance of cutting off electricity conductors. And uh, what are the main problems are uh, low standard equipments and uh, uh, unexperienced people are erecting these things and uh, uh, unauthorized uh, entry and uh, 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 there is no standard procedure sometimes follows in many places. This all leads to many of the accidents. So again, he's explained uh, briefly about the uh, functions of electrical inspectorate in Kerala. Many, many of many of the people doesn't know about electrical inspectorate. They only know KCB. That is very true, sir. And the common mistakes in electrical installations he has uh, shown, especially in the main switches and all iron boxes and household appliances. What are the major? Mistakes the common people are doing, especially in industries also. And uh, the main switch is replaced by MCB, SFU, all the things he has explained very well. And uh, planning and safety, during the planning and safety of precautions of electrical apparatus like transformer, motor, etc., he has explained. And he has explained about the problems associated with poor electrical protective apparatus. Most of the people are purchasing a very low quality electrical apparatus like uh, MCB or RCCB, ELCB and all. That may lead to uh, shock, hazard, uh, electrical uh, short circuit. You know, in Kerala, there are there is a there is a lot of accidents are happening because electrical fires are happening because of electrical short circuit, all the wirings and all. Experiencing that. So this session, Mr. Sumesh has uh, given an eye-opening session to uh, the participants that uh, the questions are uh, showing that. Many of the people are not uh, finished their questions still. Uh, I hope your practical experience has shown uh, a, an eye-opening session it was, and it was very useful and informative. Thank you so much, sir, and uh, we are also expecting this type of sessions in future, and this is as part of uh, our uh, responsibility to the public that we should uh, give this type of lectures and awareness programs Thereby, we can reduce the fatality of electrical accidents and electrical fatality. And we have to bring down that 200 or 250 number of cases, at least 200 or below 100 in 2022, 23, and the coming years. I hope God Almighty, the ultimate uh, uh, manager of all the disasters, will help you to uh, do these type of activities in future uh, to reduce the electrical accidents. That's all uh, from my side. And I hope a lot of thanks can be delivered by uh, 
Mr. Uh, Mr. Google uh, from HL uh, still there, no? Google is there? You can. Sir, I think uh, there is an issue, network issue for Google, sir. Okay, then maybe Minu, you can. Do the formal vote off. Thanks. OK, thank you, sir. Um, I would like to thank our speaker, uh, Sri Sume, sir, uh, for uh, delivering this um, insight, um, electrical safety related. So many aspects you have uh, mentioned in this uh, talk, and it's, uh, these are our practical uh, issues which you had faced. Uh, we had uh, very good um, interactive sections also with uh, in, during this uh, seminar, during this webinar. I would like to thank you, uh, sir, for your uh, valuable uh, speak of this day. And I would also like to thank uh, Sri Sefi James, Assistant Professor of uh, Tokach Institute of Engineering, uh, who had uh, delivered the welcome address of this uh, webinar. Um, I would like to thank, thank you, sir. Also, um, I would like like to thank all the HSE Forum Committee members and uh, the participants who, who had uh, um, attended this uh, webinar of the of the of today's day. Uh, I would like to thank you all for joining this. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. May I leave? Thank you so much, sir, and thank you, Steffi, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. You have coordinated very well. HSC Forum, thank you. Thank you very much.